Welcome back. So this is episode 3 of Restful Controllers in Laravel. In the first episode, we covered the first three actions of a resource controller. In the second episode, we covered the next three actions. And then I left you with a bit of a cliffhanger, and that was the delete sequence. We touched briefly on the fact that you can only really submit posts or get requests through a form. So we had to fake the patch request the same way that you would have to fake the put request. And then on delete, well, that needs to be a form. So it's not as simple as just adding a link. We actually need to have a full blown form to be able to submit a delete request. So let's go ahead and handle the delete request. Inside my show view, my customer's detail, I want to add another button here for delete. So let's go ahead and tackle that right now. So back in PHP Storm, inside my show view, here is that edit button. So let's add a form down here where the action is going to go to, let's check this back, back to slash resources, slash, and then the resource name. But it's going to be a delete request. And if you remember, we can do that using the blade directive for method. So for method, we'll go ahead and submit a delete request. All right, let's add that route. And that's going to be the seventh and final verb. So we'll say delete request to slash customers slash customer ID. And that's going to hit the destroy method. Again, the destroy method, that's the action. This is the URI. And then this is the verb. Very simple and easy convention to follow. Okay, let's keep hacking away at this. Back in my show view, I've got this, but now I actually need to submit the form to slash customers slash and then the customer ID. So that's as simple as just grabbing their ID. And then in here, I'll just simply have a button that says delete. And there we go. So there's my delete button. And if I hit that delete button, it doesn't work just yet. Notice that I have a method here of delete, which doesn't quite make any sense. That's because my form is missing the method. So let's go ahead and add a method here of post. So again, even though the final method is delete, we still have to submit a post request. Then we need to fake it using this blade syntax and pass in the actual verb that we want because post and get are the only options we have for method. Again, we talked about this in the previous episode. All right, let's give this another go. I'll go ahead and delete this out of here and hit the delete button. And now we get a page expired. Quick quiz. What does this mean? Ding, ding. You should already be saying we forgot the CSRF token. Let's go ahead and add that in. So at CSRF, and then let's go back, hit refresh, hit the delete, and now we do hit that. However, there is no destroy method inside my customer's controller. All right, that's an easy fix. Back in my customer's controller, let's add the final one here for destroy. As we've been doing all the way around, we can use route model binding to grab our customer. And all we need to do at this point is just delete them. So we'll delete that record and then we'll return a redirect back to slash customers. Okay. Hit refresh. Whoops. Customers. There we go. All right. So that's slash customers. And there we go. So now we see we only have two records left. Let's delete another test. And there we go. Now we're down to just one record. So just like that, we've got all seven verbs from a resourceful controller implemented 100%. And again, I hope you see the flow of how this works and how RESTful controllers are going to make your life so much easier. So now let's start a bit of refactoring. There's a couple of things in my controller that are currently bothering me. So let's fix one at a time. The first one is duplication. We've got this duplication right here for validation. And then we've got the same exact thing right here in my store method. What are the problems with this? Well, if we add another field, now we've got two places that we need to maintain this validation data. And that's just not great. Easy fix for this is we can actually extract that into another method inside of our controllers. Now there are more advanced Laravel features that you can use, like form requests. Let's keep it simple. Let's not bog ourselves down with yet another layer of complexity. So I will cut out this request. I'll actually delete that whole line there altogether. And let's add a new 
protected function down here. You can make it protected or even private. It really doesn't matter. I will call this validated data. And from here, I will return the same exact thing that I had in my store method. So remember that this is going to either fail or it's going to return an array. So at that point, it's going to be an array either way. Otherwise, it's going to fail and it's going to give us some sort of error in the front end. We're not concerned with that. Okay, let's go back to the store and now we don't have this data. So we replace data with this and replace that with a call to validated data. Just like that. And now we saved an entire line altogether. Then we can do the exact same refactor in my update method. I will go ahead and delete this data. And instead of using data, I will actually put a call into this validated data. And that will fix one of the issues that I have with this controller. The next issue that I have is more of an aesthetics issue, is that I'm actually using the fully qualified path to each of these classes. Notice that I have this app. We can actually simplify this by using it at the top. So we can say use app customer. And now instead of having to do app customer, I can delete the app part and just use customer. And it cleans it up just a little bit. So I will actually select all instances where I did use slash app, get rid of that. And now it looks a little bit cleaner. So there is our controller right there. Now, one last thing that I want to fix is that when you create a new record right now, we're actually going to slash customers. Let me show you what that looks like. I'll go ahead and hit refresh. Let's add a new customer here for another customer with an email of email at email.com add a new customer and it takes us back to the list of all the customers. But I think that this should go to the show view. This should be the customer's details. That's what it should really take me. But right now we don't have the ID of the generated customer. So how will we actually redirect there? Well, it's actually quite simple. The create method actually returns the newly created object for us. So we can save that to customer. And then we can redirect to slash customers slash and then the ID of the customer. So customer ID. All right, let's check out that flow instead. Add new customer, yet another one. And then we'll put email, email.com, add new customer. And now we go to the customer's detail page. So that's just another quick refactor that I think is going to be a nice win. And there it is. That is RESTful controllers. We're going to continue to expand on the concept of RESTful controllers as time goes by, but this will get you through the basics of how to generate an entire CRUD action in a single RESTful controller. Now, I know I said I was going to be finished right after this, but I've got one more little trick that I think we can do to clean up a little bit. And that is the following. Our form, right? The edit form as well as the create form. Remember that we copied the form from one place to another. However, we do have quite a bit of repetition because all of these fields are exactly the same. Now there is one difference between them and it is this value right here, which right now we are defaulting to old in terms of the create form. And in this one, we do have the customer because at this point we would have a model that we are editing. Why don't we extract this into a form blade partial that we can reuse as much as possible. So let's create a new file here and let's call it form.blade.php. And in this one, let me actually bring in the create form. Um, not everything, right? Let's go ahead and bring the div tag and the CSRF. So this section right here, I will cut it out and let's go ahead and bring it into form like so. And now in my create form, all I need to do is include this new partial. And that is going to be under customer.form. Okay. This doesn't change anything, right? We can actually go back to the browser. We go back here add new customer form is still there. And then of course our edit form that's still there as well, right? So we haven't changed anything. The form does need to stay outside because this is obviously going to be different from the create as it is from the edit. So let's go ahead and keep that in there as well as this method, right? This is kind of special to this form right here. However, we can go ahead and instead of having this in here, we can do the exact same refactor here. We'll include that customer.form. 
Okay, but at this point, of course, we have actually broken it because again, we are defaulting to having old, but we don't know if we're going to have old or not. Now, if we don't have old, what we could do is say, okay, if you don't have old, let's go ahead and use customer instead. So we'll say customer name. And so with this small change, we are going to try to find the old, right? And that's going to be the first thing we try to find. Now, if we are unable to find old, then we're going to go ahead and grab our customer name. Now, this is not going to work right away. So we're going to have to apply a different trick, but let me show you what will actually happen. So we'll put that in here. Now let's go back right here. I'll hit refresh. That one is still working. And then if we go back into the add new customer. Okay. So here it is. Now there is an undefined variable of customer. Basically what we need to do is we need to pass in a default customer, just a blank customer that we can actually use. So how would we handle that? Well, let's go back to PHP Storm and in my customer controller right now, obviously the form that we're trying to fix is this new create form. Let's go ahead and just whip up a brand new blank customer. And to do that, we can say customer is equal to new customer, a little bit different than we've been initializing before, but this will work. And then in our data, we'll just go ahead and compact customer at that point. So basically what we have here is a totally blank customer. And that will actually fix it for us. And there we go. Now, what's going to happen is that this customer, because it doesn't have any data in our create form, whenever we're actually including the form and we're actually trying to arrow into name, that's just equal to null. And actually, I can prove it to you. I'll just die and dump customer arrow name and check this out. We scroll down here. There we go. You see it says null right here. And that's okay. Level smart enough to know that whenever there's a null, you don't actually want the string of null. You actually just want it to be a blank. So with that, we've actually refactored the form out of the edit and out of the create. And that's it. This functionality is exactly the same. But if we needed to add another field, I'll just create another email field here, for example. Now that's it. It's both in that form and in the edit form. Obviously, in our case, I just repeated email. So we'll have two emails. But in the real world, if you needed to add 25 different fields, your edits and your create views stay in sync with one another. So I think it's very useful to find small refactors like that that you can perform because, again, it's going to save you time and it's going to keep your application nice and lean. As little repetition as possible. Some repetition sometimes is OK. You need to know when it's OK and you need to have a certain threshold of acceptable repetition. And then once it starts to bother you, go ahead and refactor into something that doesn't need the repetition. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up for RESTful controllers. I hope you've enjoyed these three lessons. They are very, very important. And I wanted to touch on them as soon as possible in your Laravel learning, because if you internalize the concept of creating RESTful controllers and sticking to the seven verbs, it will make every application you need to do just as simple as following the directions of RESTful controllers. So with that, we'll wrap it up for this lesson. As always, my name is Victor. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.